Okay, it is the season and all that. So I thought we might as well look at how to add more fairy light, Christmas light, holiday light. These things in the background or the front, I mean, I don't really, to your pictures. Let's get into it. If you think I look like I've maybe been through a hedge, slash I'm a nutty professor, you're not wrong on either one. In all fairs, I feel like a nutty professor and we're about to do some alchemy. This is so chaotic and I love it. So you have a picture, it looks something a little bit like this and we're enjoying it, right? It's, you know, the, the Grinch who stole Christmas, the devil wears Christmas. We're gonna go for that one. So the devil wears Christmas, and, and it's okay, but in camera, there just wasn't enough of the fluffy circles going on. But never fear, because if you have pictures with more fluffy holiday light circles in them, then that means we can do some very, very, very basic Photoshop wizardry and end up with a beautiful image that's just full of these gigantic balls of Christmas goodness. Perfect. We have loads of images shot in the same set. We've actually got, I think we've got like at least double this number of actual images to work from. But these ones uh, were ones I really like the little kind of fluffiness going on. It's hard to shoot. I will point you to the reel and the TikTok to be able to see the behind the scenes of this. But we have some fluffy balls and some of these fluffy balls are really nice and I like them and I'm wanting to use them. So I'm going to show you exactly how to amalgamate fluffy balls from elsewhere into your one image that you're actually wanting to work with, okay? So what you need to do is identify which balls you like. This has got so many euphemisms in it, honestly. I'm going to grab some images with, oh God, I'm gonna grab some images with balls in that I like. And I'm just going to select them. So I kind of like this cluster up here. So I'm deliberately trying to look for the ones that are kind of whole or on the edges. When we've grabbed ourselves a few different images with the balls that we like, all we then need to do is have a look just at those. Okay, so we have these ones, which aren't our one that we're actually working on. They're just additional balls. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select those and just open them up into Photoshop as well. So now we've got the one that we're actually wanting to work with and all these other ones. Do, 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 do. So this one, I love some of the balls in this one. So we're gonna borrow this. So what we wanna do is go ahead and do a Command A. So on a Windows, that's a Control A to select all of the pixels. And you can see these little marching ants now that are just whizzing around the edge of our picture. Then what you want to do is go ahead and do a Command C. Windows, Control C. So that will copy those pixels. Then we go back to our image that we're actually wanting to work on and add these floppy balls to and do a Command V, which is a Control V in Windows world. So if you're concerned that you think, you know, you cropped one image, you're not sure if it's the perfect fit over the top, then go ahead and do a Command T, that's Control T for Windows, and you'll get the little transform tool. So make sure that your image is nicely sat on top of the other one. And then when you're happy with that, hit enter. When you're here, all you then need to do is go ahead and change the blend mode from normal to lighten. And what that will do is it will take everything that's darker than it out and leave all the lighter elements. So then at this point, all you need to do is go ahead and add a black mask. So we're going to hold down option on the keyboard on Windows, that's Alt, and hit the new mask icon down here at the bottom. So if we add the new mask icon, we can't see anything because mask theory, white reveals, black conceals. And if all of this is going whoo, straight over your head, go ahead and check out our Photoshop for Beginners online course, re-recorded for 2024, all's good in the hood. Back into the mask, we're going to add a brush. It's going to be a white brush. We're going to go 100%. And we're going to remember where those little fluffy balls were that we loved so much. And we're just going to dab, dab, dab and dab them in. So if we can't remember where some nice balls were in the image, then go ahead and hold down shift on the keyboard whilst clicking the mask. And you'll be able to see one layer brought through the other one. So really, that's the only section of this image that I actually want to bring through so much, which is this area up here. So then we go and we find another. In this one, I love these three. So we'll do a command A, a command C, and then go back to our working image a command V and then making sure that we're aligned. So command T, do your transform tools, make sure everything's lined up so nicely, which is fine. Then do 
change the blend mode from normal to lighten. When we were on lighten, we had a black mask holding down option key, grabbing the white brush, and then just bringing those little bits through, right? If we think there might be more, shift, click. And then we've got another bright word one up here and a lovely little bit of flare that I actually quite like happening up on the top section. So I'll go ahead and have a play with this and see if I can leak that over the front. Perfect. So that's the rim light working in there. And if you have some balls, fluffy balls that you like on one side and you want to switch them to the other side, find the set that you want to emulate, which would be this set for me. Copy that layer so you can duplicate it with a command J and then put it to the top of your layer stack here and then do a command T, right click, flip horizontal and that switch them around. You can also go ahead and flip vertical, which has moved this set up to here, hit enter on the keyboard, grabbing our mask and then just making sure that we take out the sections of that layer that we actually didn't want to have applied. I don't mind that one being there actually, that's cool. And so with a few more steps, a little bit more of a tweak of a workflow, some finesse in different places, and maybe the selection of a few different balls that we prefer, you can end up here. Hope that helps.